Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic formulator and sunscreen fanatic, and today we're talking about another mineral sunscreen on my channel. Many moons ago, approximately in January, I reviewed the Cots Flawless Complexion, and arguably it was one of the best mineral sunscreens I'd tried thus far. In terms of inclusivity of skin tones due to the lack of white cast, that being said, it wasn't a sunscreen I feel was the most universally applicable due to the fact that it was just a little bit too moisturizing, and as a result of that, I had a lot of people in the comments for that video mentioning specifically the Cots Prime and Protect as a really good option for oily skin types due to the fact that it left a matte finish. So that being said, today we're gonna talk about it. But before we get into it, I'm gonna ask that you hit the subscribe button, notification bell, so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Leave your thumbs up and down below in the comments tell me, have you tried this? What are your thoughts on it, especially in comparison to the Flawless Complexion? And also, do you have any other favorite Cots products? Off. I want to state that this was actually sent as PR from COTS. Being based in the UK right now, I'm not able to get COTS products easily at all. So I reached out to the brand, especially after we connected after my review of their Claws Complexion. And they had to send it to my mom in Florida, who then forwarded it to me. So thank you to COTS and thank you to my mom. This is PR that's not influencing my decision. So that being said, let's talk about the Prime and Protect. We have an SPF 40 tinted sunscreen, PA3 pluses, not four. Looking specifically at the product claims on the COTS website, they just want this to be a sheer mineral sunscreen providing broad spectrum UVA and UVB protection and a silky translucent primer. It layers beautifully under makeup or can be used alone for a smooth matte finish. This is 80 minutes water resistant. You get 1.5 fluid ounces or 42.5 grams in this retails for 26 50. Explain to you how I review and test my mineral sunscreens. I go off of a 4B testing rubric where it stands for beard, beading, beets, and brown skin friendly. You're gonna see in the application footage. For this specific one, I'm not measuring out a quarter teaspoon like I normally do. I actually weigh out 0.8 grams since I only wanna use it for my face. Since this is specifically a face sunscreen slash a primer, having measured my face, I know exactly how much I need, which is 0.8 grams just to cover my face surface area. But specifically for day one, I apply half a face, work that in, let it set to see if there's any white cast and how bad it is, then I work it into my full face. For each of the days, I work it in and then I sit down for at least five minutes before I go on top of it with anything else. And then for the fourth day specifically, I apply it to bare face with nothing on top of it so you can see how it looks on bare skin. But I do also reapply it on top of itself so that you can see what it looks like with reapplications throughout the day. So breaking down a little bit about the product, filter-wise, this is from COTS. And COTS stands for containing only titanium and zinc. So this contains only titanium and zinc oxide. It's solely a mineral sunscreen. Specific percentages, this has 8% titanium dioxide and 3.8% zinc, and that's where you're getting that SPF 40, but only PA3 plus. Zinc in itself is fairly broad spectrum, but it's in there at a lower percentage. Titanium's carrying out of the weight, and titanium isn't the most broad spectrum. It really just gets up into the UVA2 category. But that being said, I'm not mad at that. That is fairly decent daily sunscreen protection. And then formulation-wise, this is, for the most part, very simple, especially in comparison to the other COTS products. You have dimethicones in this. It's a primer, but also it's decently occlusive. It has some blurring properties to it. You also have iron oxides. This is tinted, as you're gonna see in the application footage. One thing worth noting is that this doesn't contain bismuth oxychloride, which is present in the flawless complexion, which some people did mention in rare occasions, did cause some skin sensitivity. This doesn't have any of that. So that being said, just a very simple to the point formulation. So talking about my experience with the Primer Protect, going through each day of application. For the first day, as I mentioned, that's the first time I'm testing the sunscreen. So what I do is I take the required amount for my face and I only apply a half of that at first on one side of my face so that you can see what it looks like on bare skin compared to no sunscreen. And you can see if there's any white cast. This once you put it on the face, works in really nice. It feels really silky and it sets down fairly quickly in my opinion. There's not a lot of hassle, not a lot of pulling. You can see on my face, even just while I'm working it in, it melts into the skin so that when it's finally on the full half of the face and it's set, there is no trace of it on my face. If anything, I just feel like I look a little bit more blurred and I don't think the tint adds a lot of opacity in terms of coverage. So you can still see a lot of imperfections on my skin. I go in and apply a full face. This first day I did use it in the place of a moisturizer. I put this on top of it just a couple hydrators because with the other COTS sunscreens, as you know, they were very moisturizing. And seeing the ingredients list of this, I was like, oh, there's like dimethicones in this. This will be fine as just a moisturizer. The tea with that is makeup went on top of it very, very nicely. It's a primer. It preps the skin really nicely for makeup, spoiler alert. But it's not the most moisturizing necessarily. So I found that some of my more dry areas, like in the middle of my forehead, right between my brows and my under eyes, there was a noticeable drier texture that makeup and then setting powder just kind of exacerbated. That being said, my T-zone area, matte, my pores, diffused, blurred. Makeup looked great and it looked great the entire day. There was no weird breaking up or anything like that. And one thing worth noting is my eyelids, 
creaseless. Looked really good the entire day. My face was very matte. So overall, this first date was very successful, but I just was really dry. So to compensate on the second day, I went with this on top of a moisturizer and that helped substantially. I specifically used a Pareto eye cream on my under eye area and then just a lightweight gel moisturizer everywhere else. This worked a lot better in that context. And I found that once again, makeup worked really beautifully on top of this. And I didn't have so much of that dry texture that really bothered me that first day. So for day three, I was like, well, this is a COTS product. It's meant to be more mattifying. Let me pair it with the Flawless Complexion, which looks beautiful on the skin in terms of appearance, but it's just really, really radiant and moisturizing. So I was dumb and I put on inadequate amounts of the COTS Flawless Complexion first and then put an adequate amount for my full face of the primer on top. Because it was so much product and a lot of emolliency on my face, the primer itself didn't set into my skin. It was just a layer on top of my skin and makeup did not look good that day. So I was like, let's retry this. So on my second attempt for day three, I did the Cots Flaws Complexion an adequate amount all over my full face, but then I used the Primer and Protect as a primer because it's a primer. So I really just kind of did some spot treatment around my T-zone area where I have pores and I get really oily. But I made note not to put any sunscreen on my eyelids and had this be my only sunscreen there because I really wanted to test how good this would be as an eye primer. Makeup went on really, really well. I found that where I applied the primer, I was very matte and very diffused, but everywhere else where the Flawless Complexion was doing the work, I had a nice little radiance coming through naturally. Naturally. So I was really happy with this day and seeing this use more spot treatment like a primer and it fulfilled its purpose really well. One thing worth noting though, those eyelids, matte, creaseless the entire day, which never happens. So genuinely shocked by that. As a primer, I use it a spot treatment like you would a primer. This functions really nicely in tandem, not only with just the COTS sunscreens, but also I would assume with any other sunscreen base that you wanna use, whether it's COTS, anything that's more natural finish or more emollient, this does blur and it does maintain a nice matte finish throughout the entire day just to make your makeup look good. And then day four is the day I use this just by itself on bare face. I did a light layer of moisturizer underneath just to make sure I was moisturized so I wouldn't be dry dry. Put this on top and as you can see, you know what it looks like on bare skin. It looks very nice, it's diffused, no white cast if any. I really wanted to go in and see how this looked on reapplication, not only because I wanted to see if a white cast would appear and how exacerbated it would be, but also I wanted to see, because it is so matte, what that texture would look like. So after about three or four hours, I went in and reapplied this. Again, an adequate amount. I did that full 0.8 grams I know I need for my face, all over my face for the reapplication. The texture was fine. There was no dryness. I didn't find my eyelids got very crepey or drier texture, which was really good. But because it is a dimethicone silicone texture, I did feel it on my face a little bit. I was matte and it was powdery, but I could feel like there was something on. But I also could see it. There was like a weird layer of stuff on my face that wasn't exactly a tint. It wasn't like a BB cream or like an opacity to it, but there was something on my face. I don't know what you're going to be able to see on the footage, but at that point I was like, oh, this isn't, this isn't my favorite. So that being said, with reapplication, this gets a little bit weird for me just because I think this has a little bit more body to it than the Flawless Complexion, for example. That one's emollient, it's radiant, it's moisturizing, but I don't feel like it's very heavy necessarily. This has some body and texture to it. So once you start reapplying a couple layers of this, I feel like it wouldn't be the most comfortable on the face. Would this be nice in small moderation, like your spot reapplying? Maybe, but over the full face a couple times throughout the entire day, I don't know how this would wear and how this would look. Hitting on the four Bs, first one being beard, how it wears into facial hair, hairline and whatnot. This wears decently. I found that because it's a little bit more dry, this kind of does get a little bit more crumbly in like my facial hair. In the eyebrows, it's fine. Mustache, it's fine. In the hairline, I didn't have much of an issue. So again, especially because I find this is more for targeted areas, that wasn't a huge concern, but notes for the beard especially, not the best. Beading, how it wears with other skincare products as they were texture issues. No, it's a primer. It has a nice silky semi-powdery finish, especially. That just works beautifully on top of any skincare prep I have underneath it, whether it's just some hydrators or a full moisturizer or even just the other cotton sunscreens. It just glides on, no weird pilling or texture. But again, if you have certain dry areas, do moisturize because this will enhance dryness and texture. And then beat, how it wears with makeup, how it affects makeup application and makeup wear overall. This is a primer. It's meant to prep your skin nicely for makeup, especially because it has that nice dimethicone finish. It blurs your pores, keeps your skin nice and matte. I would just be weary of, based on what's underneath it, how much of this you do put on. You put on too much with too much underneath it. It gets a little hairy. But overall, as long as your skin is prepped nicely for this and you target this to where you need it, this works beautifully with makeup, period. And then the last B is brown skin friendly, the main question. And on me, you can see in the footage, I think this works in beautifully to the skin, especially because I prefer to use this in a more targeted manner. All over the full face, it does work nicely and it does set in eventually. Do also note though, 
though that the tint of this, again, isn't an opaque tint. I think it's one that just works into the skin and dissipates as a way of potentially hiding any white cast. So as a result of that, I don't know how well this could work on top of a sunscreen that does leave more of a white cast. So in terms of how this works with the flawless complexion versus the sensitive skin sunscreen from COTS, I don't know if this would necessarily affect much in decreasing the appearance of another sunscreen's white cast because the tint isn't much of a tint. It really just helps to make the sunscreen sink into the skin a little bit more effectively. The only other brown skin individual I've seen review this was my friend Rotten Skin. He did review this on his channel. I'll have that link down below in the description box and it looks nice on his skin. It worked nicely to his skin. He did use the full amount for his full face. So he's using it as a sunscreen sunscreen and I think it looked okay on him. If this is anything like the Flawless Complexion, I am actually seeing this as potentially being a very inclusive option once again across a very wide range of skin tones. So do note that. So is this Ramon recommended? 100%. But specifically again, as a facial primer, that's what it is. I don't want this to be a full face sunscreen to me. So if you want something that's going to keep you matte, diffuse pores, be a great eye primer. This is something you should definitely go for, especially because it's a dupe for the benefit professional. But as a full face sunscreen, I think it's a little bit too expensive in that regard. Down below in the comments, have you tried the Prime and Protect? What are your thoughts on it? What has your experience been with it? And also, what are your other favorite COTS sunscreen products? Sound off. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.